Hi everybody, I thought I'd come out with yet another video. Um, I thought I'd wait until I had a prompting from the Holy Spirit rather than just put out videos to put out videos. Uh, so it's been a little while, but a lot of times I get inspiration from looking at other folks' channels. And that includes a lot because I watch quite a bit since I'm retired. But I just watched Aaron at God A Minute's YouTube channel last three videos. And I uh, was blown away. I have a background before I retired I worked with lasers so I know a lot about optics and uh, wavelengths frequencies and all that other stuff because I had to but anyways I think I have determined the potential rapture date and I'm just gonna say potential and so the name of this video is the rapture the throne room and the rainbow so without further ado i'll go from here so here are the three videos that i'm referring to that was put out by uh aaron at god a minute and they are right here and they are indeed game changers which he goes into the first fruit which is the feast of weeks then his next one was, when is the Feast of Weeks, Shavuot? And then his last one that he just put out today is another game changer with the Feast of Weeks. And so I would recommend that you watch all three of these videos. They're no more than a combination of about, well, under an hour for all three uh, because he goes into detail and I'm just going to briefly touch on each of these. I'm not going to go into any depth. Then that's why I said, uh, please watch these firstly so that you understand more so of what I'm referring to in the rest of this presentation. But he talks about the various mikras or feasts that are followed. Uh, and those are mentioned in Leviticus chapter 23. But he goes on further to discuss that, and this gets lost in translation, the first fruits versus the first fruits. One mentioned in Leviticus 23 verse 10, and the other one mentioned in Leviticus 23 verse 17. They're two different words. One's is Rashith. The other one mentioned in Leviticus 23 verse 17 has to do with the first fruits of the crop, but it's related to the word Hebrew 1069, Bakar. Well, uh, all these things here. And when it's talking about the, the Feast of First Fruits, well, right here, when it says, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, when you come into the land which I give to you and reap its harvest, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. He shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted on your behalf on the day after the Sabbath. The priest shall wave it. So Christ fulfilled the feast of first fruits on Sunday because that would be the day after the Sabbath. He is the first fruits. Now, this first fruits, okay, pay attention here. This first fruits is not the same Hebrew word as this first fruits. This is a big deal. This is a game changer. The first feast, uh, the first fruits in the feast of weeks is not the same word as the first fruits when Jesus rose from the grave. Now, what is this word in Hebrew? Okay, so let's go and look at it, and we'll zoom out of here. This word in Leviticus 23, verse 10, in the Feast of First Fruits, when Jesus rose from uh, the grave and was presented to, you know, as a living, you know, his soul and, and body came together and he rose from that grave. He, this word is Rashith, Rashith, and it's H7225. But when we read our English translations, when you just read your English translations, you see first fruits here and you see first fruits here, but you lose all the, the special little gems. This is a game changer. So now let's go to the Feast of weeks 
which again, it's our sometime mid-June this year. We have H1061, and that's from Leviticus 23, verse 17, when it says uh, first fruits, this means Bikur, way different than Reshith. It's not even close. Bikur is the first fruits of the crop. But that root word Bikur comes from the word Bakar. That's H1069. What does Bakar mean? Pay attention. What does Bakar mean? To burst the womb. To give the birthright. Make firstborn. Bring forth first child are you kidding me that's what first fruits mean to bring forth your child now your alarm bell should be going off this this next feast this feast of weeks is the next mikra kodesh the next holy convocation that the father would bring in a harvest so skipping his second video but going to his last video his third one that he just put out today he has this the rainbow in there and this is what sparked what i'm going to present later so you have the seven colors in the rainbow seven weeks of tribulation of uh, time of jacob's trouble counting the seven sabbaths to get to the 50th day of pentecost or shavuot and counting the omer so i'll play a little bit more of his video as he presents it way more eloquent than I did right here. Throne room, what he's seeing is he's seeing a mikra. He's seeing he's seeing a, a mikra when he's brought up to the, the, the throne room in Revelation 5. Uh, it's the lamb that's opening up the scroll, right? It's the lamb that's opening the scroll and the seals, and we're all there and we're praising him, and that's in Revelation 4 or 5. I'm not going to get into that too much, but the point is uh, the lamb, Jesus, is performing... A mikra, mikra kodesh, when he's opening up the scrolls. The, the priest would do that. He, he would read the Torah and to the people. And it's the lamb. It's the lamb. It's the lamb who's doing the mikra. In Revelation 4, 5, when we see that throne room scene, really great. And again, feast of Rashith, feast of Bakar, firstborn, first child. And so what we did was we talked about, uh, I talked about how, about leaven and stuff. Spoke a lot on the live stream about leaven. Um, unleavened bread, and there is leaven in this bread. And so the really the quick summary is that leaven, although yes, it, there is an element that means it's sin, but there's there's another element to it where um, there's the leaven of the Pharisees, and then there's the leaven of Christ. There's the good leaven and the bad leaven. There's the good leaven and the bad leaven. There's the leaven of the Pharisees, which means the teaching of the Pharisees, and then there's the teaching of Christ. And so we want the teaching of Christ. And so at the Feast of Weeks, and only the Feast of Weeks, you offer leaven in your bread, and we are bread, and um, leaven helps things rise. So we are not going to rise without the leaven of Christ. Right? Mm? Huh? Woo? Yeah. Wait. Wait. Yeah. And um, what does it say in Song of Solomon? Rise. Come away with me, my love. Arise. You can't rise without the leaven of Christ. How about those apples? Now here's the game changer from our, our, our sister or brother in Christ. Again, the... The name is Dearly Beloved 2024. So there's like this Omer count. There's You have to count seven Sabbaths, right? Seven Sabbaths. And by, and by the way, it's the day after Saturday. So you count from Sunday, and it's going to end on Sunday. But again, the Feast of Weeks will always be on a Sunday. Always be on a Sunday because Saturday is the Sabbath, okay? So that's part of the reason why I have chosen June 16th as, as the Feast of Weeks. I don't know if we're going to get raptured, but that's how I see it. Um if you're going to pick another day, just pick a different Sunday. Pick the one before it or after it, and I can maybe see it. But it's not going to be a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, or, or Saturday. It's going to be on a Sunday. But anyway, back to the study here. So we've got Passover, we've got Feast of Weeks. You've got to count seven Sabbaths. So seven sevens. Seven sevens. So 49. you got to count 49. And then it's the day after. It's the day after. So there's this big Omar count. There's this big anticipation for this one big day. And so... But God, like he, he says, it's seven sevens. So he's really putting 49 in our brains. And then on the 50th, it's the big day. It's the big day. So here's what our, our friend was saying. Just so that, just like there's a there's a 49 pattern, and then the 50 is the big one. If you look at, uh, 
at this chart, I didn't put any numbers, but I'm going to start pointing at things. If you look at this chart, these represent all the feast days. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera around so you can I can just show you better. And um, yeah, one second. All right, I left that blank on purpose. We need to be a little creative here. I didn't want to write numbers and then confuse you. So there are seven feasts of the Lord, okay? There are seven feasts of the Lord. There's Passover, 11 bread, Feast of first fruits, which is the Feast of Rashith, Feast of Weeks, which is when you would offer the Bakar, Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, Tabernacles. Seven. So there's seven here, seven here, seven here, seven here, seven here, seven here. So if the rapture happens here, and and Jesus again, just, just to show you again, he says count seven sevens, and then you get to the big 50, the big, big, big culminating day. So just like we're counting days leading up to the Feast of Weeks, so too we should also count the Feast of the Lord in the seven-year tribulation. So as the seven-year tribulation is going on, we're also going to count seven feast days. You get it? Seven times seven is 49. All right? So again, seven years of tribulation, seven feast day every seven years. That's exactly like seven times seven, 49. That's exactly like the count. It's the Omar count, but it's an expansion over the seven years. So it's like a rainbow over the seven years. And this rainbow represents a covenant. So, if we get raptured on Feast of Weeks, their first um, time that they are going to start counting would be this. So, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, Okay, so that's trumpets, and that's atonement, right? So if the rapture was to happen here on Feast of Weeks, they would start doing the Omar count in terms of the tribulation, the seven-year tribulation, and this would be the 50th, the Feast of Trumpets. However, if that's a jubilee year, trumpets bounces over to uh, Day of Atonement, and that is the big 50. And that was, most people would agree that the Day of Atonement will be the second coming. So Aaron didn't go into uh, the throne room scene in Revelation 4, uh, verse 3 in particular, but I will, based on what I've seen, and again, like I said, uh, seeing the rainbow and him talking about the firstborn and the first fruits versus the first fruit is what spurred me on to stuff I've seen earlier, but I wanted to throw this into the mix as I believe I know the day that John the Revelator was in the scene of the Revelation 4 verse 3 throne room scene. So I believe that John the Revelator was in the throne room on IR 25, and I'll read this from Revelation chapter 4, verse 3, and explain why I believe that it was on IR 25 on the Hebrew calendar. So in Revelation chapter 4, and this is verses 1 through 3, it says, After these things I looked, and this is John the Revelator, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you the things which must take place after this. Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. So immediately he was in the spirit on that day. And in verse 3, And he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardis stone in appearance, and there was a rainbow around the throne in the appearance like an emerald. So there's a few things to uh, take away from this. In particular, John was in the spirit on that day, and what he saw was he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardis stone in appearance. 
So the ephod breastplate that the high priest wore were representative of the 12 tribes of Jacob or Israel. In other words, uh, Jacob's 12 sons. And they're in order here from Reuben to Benjamin. But you notice that the Sardis stone is for Reuben, his firstborn, and Jasper stone was for Benjamin, his lastborn son. So you see it here, Sardis is for Reuben. He's the one that is the firstborn son who has the birthright. And that alludes to the stuff that Aaron was speaking of uh, with the with the Bacar. And then Jasper is Benjamin, which was the last son. But it says in the Bible that the first shall be last and the last shall be first. So I think the birthright is going to go from Reuben, the firstborn, to Benjamin, the lastborn. Thus, these two are what John the Revelator sees in the throne room. And this was the word that was from Leviticus 23, verse 17 for first fruits, which was Strong's H 1069, Bacar, and that's to bring forth your first child, your firstborn, and they get the birthright. And yet mention also it birth from the womb. Also in the throne room in heaven, John sees a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. And emerald was representative of the tribe of Judah. But the fact that it's an emerald, you know that an emerald is green. So this is where uh, I had mentioned earlier with my uh, laser and optics stuff. But there's uh, some information which will be basic in nature that I'll show you here coming up next. So a lot of you know that the visible light spectrum, which is what we see with the rainbow, the seven colors goes from, and it's the what Roy G. Uh, Biv, which kids learn. So I'm going to go in reverse direction, which is, Violet, indigo, blue, green is in the middle of the seven, then yellow, orange, and red. So I believe that the violet, indigo, blue represent the spring feast because they're the spring colors. And then green is in the middle again. So kind of summery. And then yellow, orange, and red are the fall colors which I believe are associated with the fall feast, whereas violet, indigo, and blue are associated with the spring feast. And the one in the middle is green, which is Shavuot or Pentecost, many people say. But its spectrum is 480 to 550 microns or nanometers. So you only just really need to know that number range and that's what it falls between. So superimposing the colors of the rainbow onto the menorah with its associated feast days, you have violet, indigo, blue, green in the middle, yellow, orange, and red, which would be Pesach or Passover for purple, unleavened bread for the indigo first fruits with the blue pentecost or shavuot with green and then going to the fall feast which would be the feast of trumpets and yellow the day of atonement orange and then tabernacles or sukkot in red and since the throne room rainbow was green or emerald that seems to allude to the center color of green being the feast of Shavuot or Pentecost is what John sees in the throne room.
So since John the Revelator was in the throne room during the time frame in which there was an emerald rainbow or a green rainbow, and also present was the one that had the appearance of a sardis and a jasper stone, that would be the first fruits for Reuben and Benjamin, the first and the last born son, with Reuben having the birthright, but it possibly going to Benjamin, the last son, with the birthright going to the first, with the last being first. So that would be during the time of first fruits, but because there's a green rainbow, it's also going into the time frame of the center candle, which is Shavuot. So then, how can I say that John the Revelator was in the throne room on IR 25? So without getting too technical, but a little bit, so you might have to just accept my word for it. But so with a double rainbow, the primary rainbow, the darker of the two, is from 40 degrees to 42 degrees uh, in which your eye can see. And then the secondary bow of the double rainbow, fall, the fainter one, falls between 50 to 53 degrees. But God's favorite number, one of his favorite numbers aside from seven, is phi, which is equal to 1.618, and that's the divine or golden ratio number. But using a little bit of trigonometry here, and this is what we used to do a bit, but the arc cosine or the arc ten, the inverse cosine of phi minus 1, or 1.618 minus 1, is equal to the arc cosine or the inverse cosine of that phi minus 1, which is 0 0.618. And that ends up being 51.83 degrees. So that falls into the category of the secondary bow in between 50 and 53 degrees. But more specifically, that is a color, is the color green. I mean, there's a spectrum, like I had said earlier, but for phi minus one, using the golden ratio, it specifically falls at 51.83 degrees. So that's part of the fainter secondary bow of a double rainbow. But also looking at this number, and this is another thing associated with optics. So 51.8 terahertz is equal to 5,784.15 nanometers or microns, uh, if you round it up. But notice you have the 5784 which is the current Hebrew year that we're in, plus some change. So you don't really have to know the math or trigonometry or even the units. Um, that was just something I presented for those who want to see a little bit more detail. The only thing you have to know is the golden ratio phi minus 1 ends up being uh, the green portion of the double rainbow, the fainter secondary bow is at 51.83 degrees. Then 51.83 terahertz, uh, also associated with phi, is equal to 5784.5 5, nanometers when you round it up. So Here's the conversion right here. But if you take the 5784, which is the current Hebrew year we're in, plus the change of 0.15, that ends up being 
the 54.6 day of this current Hebrew year on the Enoch calendar or the 54.8 day of the year 5784 on the Gregorian. So I just did both, but they both round up being the 55th day of the Hebrew year 5784, which is what we're in. And the 55th day is 25 IR of 5784 on the Hebrew calendar. Hopefully that wasn't too convoluted. So essentially John is in the throne room that's mentioned in Revelation chapter 4 verse 3 on Iyer 25 of 5784 this Hebrew year. And that equates to on the Hebrew calendar, and I know there's a few of them, but it only vary by a few days on either side of June 2nd, 2024. So, in fact, I believe this will be the year of the rapture because the church is no longer seen after Revelation chapter 3. And so, John being in the spirit in Revelation 24, I believe that is on Ayer 25 of this Hebrew year 5784 which equates to June 2nd, 2024 on the Jewish calendar. And like I said, it'll vary depending on, on which calendar you in fact use. So I know there's the various calendars out there, but in my opinion, I believe in order to stir the Jews to jealousy that the Lord is going to use uh, the Hebrew calendar in which Shavuot falls on their calendar uh, and that will be a day that they recognize when the rapture occurs so but we the gentiles and some jews as well will recognize june as being pride month which represents the rainbow and the rainbow is associated with the covenant that God had with man, with Noah, so as the days of Noah. But the rainbow with the pride month is also associated with the days of Lot. So I believe between now on June 1st, starting tomorrow, through the summer solstice, with summer being nigh, and the summer solstice this year, this year is on June 20th. I believe that the highest rapture watch time will be between tomorrow, June 1st through June 20th. But in particular, in particular with the first fruits being the firstborn and you see the sardis and the jasper stones which is Reuben, which was Jacob's firstborn, and Benjamin, his lastborn. But with it being going into the green background rainbow, that is the time of Shavuot and Pentecost. So Shavuot on the Hebrew calendar falls between Tuesday evening, June 11th through Thursday, June 16th, of 2024 and that's the date that they are recognizing uh, in Israel and also the Jews here in the United States um, I know Aaron counted out seven Sabbath and that ended up being June 16th that's also a possibility so I think with John being in the throne room uh, during the first fruits on a year 25 going which is June 2nd on most Hebrew calendars then going through June 11th through the 13th and even stretching it out to the 16th 
These will be the days that the Jews recognize and will be stirred to jealousy using their calendar and not the one that the Gentiles are using. So again, with John being in the throne room on a year 25, which on the Hebrew calendar is June 2nd, in a couple of days, and Shavuot, I'm saying the Shavuot potential rapture on the Hebrew calendar between the 11th through the 16th of June, and summer is nigh, with the summer solstice being on June 20th, also with June being Pride Month, which is like the days of Noah, the rainbow being the covenant between man and Noah with the rainbow being that covenant, and the days of Lot also associated with Pride Month, I think we can safely say that the highest possible rapture date will be during Shavuot, that being the center candle, which is green, because that's the middle color of the seven colors of the rainbow, and that's what John the Revelator sees in the throne room. I think that the highest possible rapture dates is going to be this year between June 11th through the 16th, but more so between the 11th and the 13th to stir the Jews to jealousy. And based on the double rainbow and the divine ratio number or golden ratio number phi, which is equal to 1.618, the color green for a double rainbow falls at 51.83 degrees but also using 51.83 terahertz, that's equal to 5784.15, rounding it up. And that alludes to the Hebrew year 5784 plus 0.15, which is the 55th day of 5784 or I year 25 of 5784. So I believe the rapture for sure is during this Hebrew year in which we're in, but much more specifically during the month of June. And it all seems to be pointing to the time frame in which John was in the throne room on a year 25 but you see the transition from the first fruits uh, which Aaron mentioned with Reuben and Benjamin being there with Sardis and Jasper but with the green rainbow this is what that number is equal to based on the golden divine ratio of phi. Anyways, I hope that this video will be my last one. I've said that a couple of times now, but uh, as the day approaches, I think there's more clarity within the body of Christ and it becomes more and more apparent within the brethren. So I'm seeing a Shavuot rapture based on the throne room scene that John the Revelator sees in which the church is already gone after chapter 3 in the book of Revelation. So I'm more specifically going to be focused on the 11th through the 16th, but if you want to shorten it, uh, the 11th through the 13th, but I think that's just splitting hairs. It might be plus or minus a few other days depending on which Hebrew calendar you're looking at. And I think the Lord wants to spur the Jews to jealousy. So I think it's in the June time frame 
simply based on the days of Noah and the days of Lot and this being Pride Month that we're going into. So I don't believe it was in the month of May. I think it's strictly limited to the month of June. And before summer, the summer solstice, in which summer is nigh, before June 20th of this year. And I think it's exactly on this year based on the fee number, divine ratio calculations for the color green specifically, which is in the throne room. Anyways, like I said, I hope this video has been a blessing. If you haven't come to the Lord, you, the time is down to possibly two and a half weeks. Two and a half weeks. Please turn to the Lord. Please come to Christ and get saved now because the time is now. It's not uh, the next day or two. Don't wait that long. But anyways, I will talk to you soon, and hopefully I'll see you all in the sky. Take care.